Welcome to day two of the Cheltenham Festival. What a thrilling day we had yesterday. Winners shared around quite equally, and we're going to get straight into today's action. And good news or bad news, depending on how you think about it. No technical glitches today, so you get the whole conversation between Gray and me. Well, then, Gray, the old saying that Doug started many, many years ago was, "Come on the re come on the preview show, and you're guaranteed a couple of winners." <coughs> um, what about that? Two for you and two for me on day one. I had. I had two on the jumps on day one, a brilliant start to the week for me. Um, I could have had three if Egret didn't hit the last in the red winter, but... Well, you know. I don't know, I think mine would have beat you on the run anyway, because it's pretty finished as well, that one. Yeah, okay. it's a short running, so once you hit that last fight, that was it there. Yeah, I think no coming back from that. I think you're probably right, although the race that we both thought we got a chance of winning, neither of us won. You know, no, my mind, mind was disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I was really disappointed because at that point, my, my two winners came in the last two races. So at that point, I was thinking, oh, this is not good because I was um, I was hoping Captain Mannering was going to win. I, of my others, I had a sneaky feeling that um, Flynn's bullet could run a good race, but I thought because he was a front runner that they'd eventually catch him, but, but they didn't catch him. So whether that means he's better than I thought he was or whether it means the rest of them are no good, I don't know. Yeah. Pretty impressed with that, so that was good. Great start for David Hooley. What did he get? Three winners? He won yeah, he had three in the first four, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I don't think he had one in the third race, so I think he won the first three races he went in. So he was off to a yeah. flyer. And, uh, and Leon fired back with two. You got two. I got two. Uh, two for David Robertson as well. We said he'd do well, didn't we? Yeah, he always got a good chat on David. And then Vinnie which? Gerard picked one up, which I think Leon tipped. And, um, did he? Yeah. Uh, and and the professor Paul Rhodes back on the back on the Cheltenham winners board as well, beat beat both yeah. of us in the um, cross country. But the biggest shock of the day, I suppose, is Joshua Sutherland didn't have a single winner. They had all no, those red hot favourites. I mean, he must be wondering what on earth's going on. Uh, yeah, and Josh, well, I was surprised he didn't get one, in that. But you know, they were doing three minutes for the first four races. But oh god. <laughs> yep, I'm sure Josh will, Josh will pick him up today. Or tomorrow, but I think he had, he had some really good chances there. I mean, that's was it the smaller that fell at the first fence? I mean, it was a real turn. Darren Thompson didn't have the best of starts either, did he? He didn't have any winners either. So the winners no. maybe, maybe not spread out as much as they were at the first day of Royal Ascot, but there's still a few a few people getting in there, getting some getting some wins on the book. Well, we start off then with the my favourite race of the week. Oh, the bumper. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that I should be getting Leon's comment out on this really, but he doesn't seem to want either. So um, yeah, what do you make of it? Are you a fan of these bumpers? I usually chuck one in, but I am this season because every time I put one in a bumper, it's got beaten, it's got beaten, it got beat a long way. And I, I don't travel for bumpers really. I just use one, obviously, for juvenile races, and I just chuck them in on the game if they ain't got a race to run in. But I can, I, you're looking at these 
on the screen and that Kozak has won 19 to 18 times over two miles on this <laughs> in this game so he's a pretty good two miler but I think I'm going to go with well David Oli's first dance he started off well beginning of the season yeah I'm guessing all those first all, must be all related in some sort of way mustn't they and they're always there or thereabouts yeah right, Paul's, Paul's had his winner now he's back, he's back in the He's back in the winner's enclosure. Uh, he likes the bumpers. He chucks a few in. He got two in this one. He chucks them in there, Donny. He likes the bumpers. He does. But I mean, I think we're going to be pretty boring here. I think we're both going to go for first dance again, aren't we? I'll go for Loxwood for second for the forecast. All right, OK. Well, I'll, go, I'll just to be different, then I'll, I'll go co- close out. But uh, this, to me, is the, is, the, is the least exciting race of the week. Uh, I don't know why, because two more flat races, I don't mind them at all. But when it's on the... Jumps, he just doesn't seem right. I don't know why. Well, it's just psychological for me, I suppose, knowing what the races are really supposed to be for. And that they're pretty important. There's been years gone by. People just used to put a six furlong sprinter in, didn't they? don't think it's quite as blatant as that anymore, but it, it used to be. Yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to put my sprinters all the, on the last up that race and see if anyone was any better than the jumpers. <laughs> yeah, they usually they usually were, but they couldn't jump. Yeah, I mean it wasn't it wasn't quite so difficult in the SO6, was it? If, if, if they couldn't jump, it seems to make much, a bit more of a difference now. So that's probably made it a bit better. But it's uh, it's still a, a pretty low key start to the second day for me. So second race on day two then is the Golden Miller novices novices chase two and a half miles. Only a smallish sort of field for this one again. Eight of them. What do you like the look of in this? Eight of them with six one by. T- Three trainers, Uli, Rensburg, and so on. You expect one of them to come up on top. Um, Low Downs, Kabu, Sarad could have a chance. I see most of them going for Highway Man or Stead years ago, so I'm going to go for an upset and keen, keen partner. Setting string of Leons. Well, I think, to be honest, if I was looking at this race the other day, I think, I'm not sure whether this is in one of the. Um, whether it's in the Lucky 63 competition or not. I've got a sneaky feeling it might be. Um, and if it is, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've tipped Hollow, and I've definitely tipped it somewhere. That's the only place I can think of it might have been. But after what I'm happened probably, yesterday, I'm, 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 I'm going to I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the wonderful because I don't think that Joshua Sutherland can possibly go 15 races or 14 races, whatever it is, at the Cheltenham Festival without a winner. I think he's got to have a winner soon, and so that's why I'm going to go for that one. Yeah, I, I look at it, he's only won three nine. Uh, Leon's why well, he must win seventy. The one five nine keen partner. He's not I rated really the one that's not but look, at, look at the results no. yesterday. I mean, would you have seriously put a penny of anybody's money on nomadic bygraves winning? I mean I wouldn't. <laughs> you even no. totally ruled out your own horse, bear, and said that got no chance and it won. Uh, yeah, I said it had no chance because <laughs> it won his debut. And I thought, oh, it's, it's going to be a good horse. And I chucked him in, and obviously this carried on when he wasn't winning. Now I chucked him in handicaps, and he was, I thought he'd be desperate. He wasn't winning. He wasn't running well. Mm. But I always, I always thought yesterday, if he, if he ran like he did on day one of the season, he'd, he'd be well in, and he was. Yeah, he certainly was. He won, he won really well. And I, I just think that uh, looking at a lot of these, especially these novice races, I think it's a lot of them. Jump into handicaps, don't they? Have a few races in handicaps, and they go over hurdles, and then they might pop into the national up flat race. I don't think you can necessarily trust the form figures a lot of the time. And I can say that nomadic bog race and, and your bear probably weren't anywhere near top rated in the races yesterday. And so that's why I think the wonderful can win for Josh. But mostly it's because I just can't see him going that many races without a win. No, no. It ain't good with that. <laughs> no, I'm going to go for key. I'm going to stick with key partner to overturn his stable mate. Okay. Right, well, we'll agree, we'll agree to differ on that one, then, and uh, we'll, leave it, we'll leave that one at that. Right, the Per Temps Network final is next up. That, that's the one where we had the qualifiers throughout the season, haven't we? Although there's not that many turned up for the final again, just 10. No, you, 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 you there's got a couple of races, and we got this one, you've got the Stayers hurdle. Um, like I said, at the beginning of the season, you start off with all your weight and you work your way down with the, mm. through the legs. So the higher ones, you had, was the one in the first week you expected to be group with horses, really? Yeah, I, I wouldn't qualify in this. I didn't bother putting in. I think I sent it to the sea pigeon instead because it's it's got more chance of winning, which is which is a shame. Um, but it still looks like a good race. Uh, you've got a couple in there. 
I got I got two chances in there, very good, very good chances in both of them. Um, I, I fancy Mana Bone to come out on top just because he's getting the weight off October Sunset, although October Sunset was aimed for this race. I tell um, you, October Sunset is, is one of your, is related to all your flat horses, your October horses, is it? it, it, is it the, all the October horses all related to October Breeze was in this season, but last season he was winning runs over two miles. Right. Yeah, so I named all his offspring October will be in the name. Right. So yeah, it, it, the father is October Breeze. So that was your that was your main hope for this, was it to start with? <coughs> yes, but I I'm just going to go for Manabong because he's getting a bit of weight. No, I can see the handicap proper. Yeah, I mean you've got to do that, haven't you? I mean to be fair, going back to yesterday, I won that juvenile handicap at the end. Um, loves no friend, and I said to you on the preview, didn't I, that the other one would win Gur. And if you look at it, Gur came sixth. Um, and if you look at the weight he was giving the other one, if they'd have been on level weights, girl would have won. Well, they would have beaten him anyway. From whether they would have finished first or second, I don't know. So you've got to take the uh, you've got to take the weight into account, haven't you? So if you're um, if you're thinking that after the way you were tipping yesterday, um, your own horses, I'm going to go for um, October sunset. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you crossed that bear out yesterday and it walked it. So well, I didn't walk it. Okay. It, it won well. I I did see Clara Bell had a chance. Queen's look to chase your own second, so I'm going to go for October Sunset and Queen's look to come second. Well, Dance on of the Demons got top weight for a reason. Um, I, I expect he could run a good race, but 12 stone. Uh, no, I'm going to stick with my man of bone, and I think I love my brick. I love my brick. Kevin me now for a second. Yeah, I don't know. What, have you got any idea what it's called? That is it, some obscure sort of thing, that, some obscure reference I don't know about, or something, or what? I don't know. No, I don't, I don't know. He quite often names his horses after um, after old horses from years ago. But I certainly don't remember a horse called "I Love My Brick." And it's, uh, maybe oh, I usually name after old horses, but the. You know, you you can you only use it once, and then in the game, once you use it, the game is gone. Mm. You can't use it again. You have to be pretty good at judging which horse to name a good horse after. Yeah, I tend to get them quite a lot wrong when I'm doing that. I've had some really, really bad horses with some really, really good names that I'll never be able to use again. Well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we both think you're going to win that, and I think you're going to win it with your October sunset. Well, and you I, think you're going to win I, it, man of born. I always, I always aim an horse for this race because I won it, I won it a couple two years ago. I think. I always aim horses at this race because I always put three or four three miles in the league anyway. I know they're not going to be all group group horses, so I you know check them in here. As soon as I know they're not good for group horses races, I check them in this race. Right, that's good. So there is a there is a plan then. So that's good. Oh yeah, it's always a plan. <laughs> right, the Ryanair Chase is next, and this is the sort of n newer, newish big grade one race, isn't it? For the two and a half miles, really, so two mile five furlongs. So good big field for this. It could be um, could be quite uh, quite competitive, couldn't it? Yeah, it looks like we somebody's going to run wide, isn't it? It's usually mine. <laughs> <laughs> There's always someone, uh, mine's always really white for some reason down that corner, last corner. Yeah, really, like, why, why, are you, why are you on the inside and going to myself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of horses in this with some decent form that won some good races between them. What have, you, what have you got in this? Oh, I got Shooting Star who won his first two races. I thought, oh, I got a good horse here. He's won one since, he's won three, so you know, he's done more than I thought you could do this season, so... Well, it's not bad though, is it? Winning three, three, winning three races in a season is pretty good going for one Yeah, one. he's done. He's done this season. I don't think he'd be good enough for this. You know, he had to go in it. Yeah, I see, you've got to put them somewhere. I mean, I've got, I've got Furious Fifties in this, and the only reason that Furious Fifties is in this is because I've already got two in the burn plate later on, and he would have been pretty much top weight in the burn plate. So he's um, he's going in this, but oh, he won a decent race. He might finish. Fifth or sixth, well, I don't think he's good enough to win. He won't do bad. There's one or two in there that have been doing surprising. Dim whip for Craig Beckwith. That was a surprise winner last week. Yeah. Don't necessarily expect that to win. Gold Coast is another one. Kevin Meehan, that's won a couple of times earlier in the season, doing well. And obviously, Leon's got two in that Swain Fork beard of his. Does quite well as well. Um, what do you think of the Yeah. Big, they're going to get one of the big guns, do you think, this? Well, I look at the long pause of 170. It's probably last year's rating. Um, he's a nine-year-old. Um, no, I'm going to go for a maiden. I'm going to go for Davy Robertson's uh, speedy 
good shoe-cop for whatever it's called. Yeah, it's one twice, second twice, isn't it? So it's... Um, yeah. He, he did all right yesterday, so he's a, he's a man in form. Um, yeah. He did all right on the flat as well. I think he won a really big race on the flat as well yesterday. So yeah, he's I mean, it could be the it could be the dark horse, and they're gonna go, go each way on that one. Big each way, fifty to one. I'll, I'll have ten every trade on that one. And what are you going for the win? I'm gonna go for Josh to get off the with on poles yeah. to win. Yeah, I think that uh, that looks pretty good. But I'm gonna go slightly different because I'm gonna go for somebody else who's not had a particularly good start to the week, and that's Darren Thompson. The trouble is. I don't know which one of the two is going to come into form. I'm thinking it's going to be Cape Solitude for some reason. I don't know why. It's not anywhere near the best rated horse in the race at all. But I think he's due a winner as well. I think Cape Solitude will win. I think the long pause will be second and Swain Fork will be third. Right, the second three mile hurdle of the day is the Stayers Hurdle. This is the Grade 1 version though. No handicaps in this. What about this one? Are you in this? I've got Ted Nugent in it. Right, um, I mean, see, I'm going to talk to you about this because I know your music and the <laughs> sort of music you like. Now, I never would have thought you'd have been a Ted Nugent fan. I'm not a Ted Nugent fan. So uh, why have you called a horse Ted Nugent? Because I had an album back in the day called Axe Attack, if you remember it. Yeah. And I had different musicians on it, and he was one of them on there. And I, you know, I just named my after musicians and songs and all sorts of things oh. and I remember Ted you should be dying low I wasn't a great fan of his I will I know he's a bit what do you call it <coughs> socially isn't he <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's one of them people uh, um he likes to go around shooting things, not not people, but he likes to go around shooting animals and stuff. So I think he's a little yeah. Bit, he's not very popular, but Americans don't seem to mind you shooting people. It's just animals that don't like you shooting. So, yeah, um, yeah you, you know, you know my politics. Martin, I'm a bit on the left side, so <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that sort of thing and doing all that. That's oh, why I, I was like, surprised. I do like. I could love all racing, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was surprised when I saw it. I, thought, I can't imagine. I can't imagine Gray sneaking into the back of a Ted Nugent concert with his bow and arrow. And his, uh, oh, his no chance. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe a motorhead one, but not a Ted Nugent. <laughs> So, what sort of chance has it got? I mean, personally, from the times I've commented on it, I don't think he got a chance of winning this. I don't, he's only in it because he, I didn't get him qualified for the Potems. Right. And he, he will make he will make the run in and then he'll fade, turn him for home, and he'll drop out to finish last. Right. That's what chance he got. I'm going to go for the, the obvious one, Michigan. Yeah, I mean, that does look a cut above the others, doesn't it? He's rated 180 for some reason, so he's got to be good. <laughs> well, you can't get any either 180, can you? I mean, when you said yesterday, didn't we, that uh, maybe there are one or two too many 180s around but where do you go with them if they keep winning it's definitely better than all the others um, just if it has an off day I suppose something could come out and get it but I wouldn't know what um. Josh may you have a chance at the top there with Man of Manners yeah I mean if um, we had such a bad day yesterday you'd expect him to have a good day today and he could easily he could easily pick yeah. up three uh, pick, uh, picked up three winners already by now so it could be a very different story by then but this is one of the races where one sort of sticks out and that Michigan does look like it's nailed on doesn't it yeah Right, the Brown Advisory Stable Plate is next. This is the handicap version of the Ryanair, isn't it, really? Two more on five, and I dare say a lot of people have been working out which ones to put, which one to put in which. I know that's something that I did. Did you do that? Yep, I, I knew that Mizam and New Business coming here. Didn't expect him to be that far down the weights, so that surprised me. I thought he'd be up towards the top of the weights, but 154 dot weight, so I was carbon neutral have a chance. I think in this one, if we can get back to last year's form, and if we can jump properly, that, yeah, Manubis will, uh, Manubis will make the run in and then get caught mm. by something, by something, probably that circular bridge might lead them. <laughs> well, that, that ran all right the other day, but I mean, this is, um, if you look at this, if you look at, if you look at the handicap on this, if the top four weren't in it, uh, one of which is mine, by the way, uh, if the top four weren't in it, if this had been a 140, then everybody would just have been about in the handicap, and it would have been a really good handicap and those other four could have gone in the could have gone in the Ryanair because I've put one in the Ryanair and two in this and you could argue that maybe I should have been forced to put two in two in the other one because Sapphire and Steel was initially going to go in the in the in the right in the Ryanair but I thought well do you know what I can get it in 
to this one and it's getting white off the top off the top one so i might as well stick it in this because it's got little chance of doing anything better than a place in the other race so again it's a, it's a bit mean on the ones down the bottom there's still a few yeah. in the handicap and there's nine this time mine sneaks in just about right that circular bridge <coughs> time last week i wouldn't have even been considering running it in this race but it won really really well last week so you never know no. it could do all right but i don't think it'll win no <laughs> <laughs> He put me well up it now. I was going to tip that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, what will win this? It's it's wide open, isn't it? Really, it's wide open, and there's a sort of race I think Alex Cherry could have a sneaky chance for that work glass. Mm, yeah, because that's that's not that's not a bad little horse, that is it? Um, no. It's not that far out of the handicap either. It's only what, how many pounds yeah. is it? It's only a little, bit, a little bit wrong, isn't it? Not, 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 not. Yeah. So that, you wouldn't, that wouldn't put you off it, would it? No, no, no. Alex also is not. He usually, he usually puts them in the right races, doesn't he? He does. The, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm thinking that my circular ridge could actually spring a surprise. Sapphire and Steel is a pretty good horse as well. If it, uh, if it, if it gets its chance, it's, it's been running okay. Um, but I think it's got a little bit too much weight. And so I'm going to go for Satikon Chips for David Robertson if it stands up. All right. Well, I'm going to go for Alex Cherry's Lure Glass and the Tricast. I'm going to go for Patrick Ogan down in number 17, Saitella. He's only had three wins. 105. He could want to play some carbon neutral. Right. Okay. Well, if we're going to do that then, well, I'm going to stick with the. Satikon chips winning. I am going to put your Mirza and Nubis in to come second, and then I'm going to suggest that one of mine will be third, but I don't know which one. Right, the True House Stud Mayor's Novices Herbal. There's only five in this. And there's only one outstanding 160 off to the race, the rest are 120 below. You know, it should be a bad go to meet it you should. in, shouldn't it? Should be a penalty kick, shouldn't it, for. David Healy. Um, yeah, should should be. I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, do you think this is this is a race that we that we should have, or is with is other other races that we could have instead of this? Because this is only attracted five runners. There's not that many people going to have that many novice, not two more novice hurdlers, are they? Because they you can put two in the Supreme, you can put two in the Triumph if they're four year olds, you can put two in the. What, if, what, if well, yeah, but well, when I did my trials, the ones I well, went in were obviously coach because I would have kept one back for this if it was a filly of mare yard. So, you know, if you've got a filly of mare, then you would definitely go for this one, wouldn't you? Well, you would, but it's pretty obvious that there's not that many decent mares about one over two um, miles one, because well, there's only two decent horses in the race, isn't there, really? <laughs> but, you know, we do not chart them, it has to be included, doesn't it? Because that's. Well, I suppose. What, we go, what, what are we going to do when you go to. to Two hours, was it five days? Do that. We're going to have to add races. Well, no, this is what I'm saying. I mean, there's some I think we should take out. I mean, I don't think there's any need to have this race. Um, because it's... They could they could run in the Supreme for me. And we got in good big field. And, um, I suppose I wouldn't choose. think that. If I'd got one in it, I would probably not be thinking that. But it's... <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> it does make it a bit of a... I mean, yesterday, the way things worked, we got 13 really good races... Today at Cheltenham, we've only got what eight and a half. At least two of them are pretty rubbish. I mean, this one's not going to be much of a race. The champion bumpers are a waste of time. So it's, it's a bit sort of like after the Lord Mayor show in it today. Really, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a non day. Really, I think we need to balance it up a little bit because it's too 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 many big races on the first day and not enough on the second. This is yeah. one that could get lost at the end of the day. Really, I think, but uh, that's not up to me, is it? Whoever wins it won't mind, will they? <laughs> they'll, have, no. they'll have had a winner. So. Well, I don't think David mind it at all because he'd be it's another notch, another winner, isn't it? Well, yeah, and it uh, could make a difference, couldn't it, when it comes to being the champion trainer for Cheltenham or even the champion trainer full stop. The only problem he's got is he's got a, he's got a three pound penalty. But I don't think that'll stop it, will it? Um, no. I'm, I'm looking at Lee's down there. He ran in the bumper, didn't he, last week? Well, he kept it back with this. I don't know. But I'm going to stick with David Ooley's first act. Yeah, I mean, you, you couldn't you couldn't go against that, could you? I mean, I think to be sensible, we'll have to uh, we'll have to do betting without that or, or pick a second. I mean, what, what are you going to have to come second? I'm going to for Josh Jumbo or he comments. Um, I go for Jumbo. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll go for the other one then. Um, it's it's uh, it's strange to see both Leon and Josh got all so far behind in the ratings in the race, isn't it, really? I think yeah. the Paul Rhodes horses is rated better than both of theirs. So that, that, could, that could do them. There we go. That should be an easy, that should be an easy win for David Healy, David. really. I think. All right, handicap time next again then. The Kim Muir Challenge Handicap Cup Chase. Now, that's what the look of a decentish sort of handicap. There's only four 
but uh, I don't know how many caps are, that's not bad. Uh, this one's capped at 140, and the, the top weight 139, so this one's not worked out so bad. No, I wonder why that Manic Monday's in there, she won last time out. I thought you may have found him better there, so it's going to give a lot of weight to the rest of them. He does, I mean, he's only had three runs, hasn't he? He moved it in the window, and um, I think he's improved a lot, hasn't he, in the, in the in the time between the start of the season and the window with these horses he's brought in. Um, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Pad- Padrick's an old hand at this game, he, he, he'll be in better next season. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be, he be one to watch next season, I think. So it could well be that he thinks that one's, that one's capable of winning the big races then but he might as well try and um, try and carry top weight in this because I suppose if you're looking at it there's, there's no real stand there is there that, that looks like it's well in or anything well if it was too full and short well, I think Broken Glass would be well in but I don't think he stays this far no Look, although he's he won in the game over this distance but that's you know in the trials he didn't seem to win over anyway go three miles I was going to go with under chasing but he's too high weighted at the moment so because you've been second on his debut Oh, so um, if he could st- guarantee to stay the three miles at one, I think he would be all right. But I'm not going to go for it because I know he doesn't stay the three miles one. Right, so that, that, that comes from the ruling right then. Good luck. Well, one of Steve's uh, at the bottom took it in your sock. That goes that goes in the front, I think, doesn't it? So there might be a bit of pace on, but that's not going yeah. to necessarily do you any any favours either, is it? Um, uh, what about your wacky race, sir? What's that like? But she's good. She is uh, a half sister to the horse that my horse that won the Grand National last year, Blue Penny. So uh, she's in for this season just to see if she goes in the race kit, because next season she'll be up there in the Grand National bunch, and she's already oh. won a few. I think she's won once and been twice or whatever a few times. They're they're good. Those Blue Penny ones. Well, they're they're. they're they're, they're from a horse called a mare called Bogus Penny who I ran in the Grand National about three or four seasons ago she did okay and I think she might have won an, another race but she seems to be able to get horses that can win over three miles I've got another one that's out of her as well in this called uh, not in this race in, in the league team called Richo Boreas and that's, that's won two or three times this season over three miles so they're capable of winning they've got a bit of they've got a bit of speed which is probably how that sort of Blue Penny managed to win the National last year um, they've got yeah. a bit of speed and Penelope Pitstop's got a bit of speed but she will be better next season over further I couldn't get her into a longer distance race this week because of the handicap things otherwise she'd have gone for that three mile four race at the Somerset National is it? Yeah I'd have put her in we that can, yeah. I don't think she's I don't think she's quite handicapped uh, enough to, to I don't mean the weight I mean the, the distance I think she, she fell short of what you needed to get in so no, she's doing this but she's got a chance especially if they go off quick and it turns into a proper test of stamina she has got a good chance my other one it met the combat that's won twice as well this season it won the very first week it won three miles over hurdles it wasn't supposed to be a hurdle it was in to be a chaser but I think with the way the maidens worked in the first week I, I had to, you can only put one in each race and the way I put them in I thought well this one might go over so let's stick it over hurdles and see what happens and it would and then I thought oh maybe it's a hurdle then so I ran it the next week over hurdles uh, or, or a couple of weeks later and it was useless so I stuck it over fences and it won at three mods again so it's another one that could do okay um, but I don't think it's necessarily capable of giving ten pounds to Penelope Pitstop and the fact that Penelope Pitstop is in off the proper mark means that she has got a great chance I just wish there was one of those only one horses in this that go off at a million miles an hour I'm hoping that Stu's goes off pretty quick because I think it normally does and I'm also pretty sure that one of Craig's sometimes goes off quite quick as well so maybe that'll, that'll do for that but I think I've got a bit of a chance in this race Right. So, which one are you going for there? Again, this is the thing. I don't know. I tipped, tipped the wrong one last week. I think I'd probably... Um, well, I don't know. It's, it's difficult because these two, they're, they're both... They're, they're out of my two favourite mares. I've got two mares that have given me loads of good horses. The Penelope Pitstop one is out of Bogus Penny, who was in the league and won and stuff. Mech the Combat is one of about six good league horses I've had that have all won. All came out of a horse, a mare that I had called Joanna Lumley, but it never made it into the league team, but has put some really good ones in. So I've got a lot of both of them. And so they're, they're good lines and I, I want to see do well. So I think that probably Penelope Pitstop will be the one. Uh, but I wouldn't I be surprised pa- if the other one did. <laughs> well, I think pa- Patrick has put that Manic Monday in. Because I looked down and he got Lady Ravina, who's been a city done this, only two runs. He's right down the line for it, you know, I think. Perhaps he's got a plan. 
And they beat you, that's a dark horse, and they beat Harold Cup and Lady Verena. It could be, couldn't it? I mean, I tried that day to day yesterday, it didn't work for me, it ended up coming last after three falls, but it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it would be a good plan, wouldn't it? Make yourself just yeah. get, in the, get in the handicap. David Robertson's another bloke to look at in this race. He's got hard class, Judith always runs a decent race, but he's got a lot of weight there again. Second, second top weight, but again, that might be setting things up for his other one. Um, no. Trend attitude. Um, and then Craig Beckwith, I mean, he normally has a win at a big meeting, doesn't he? He didn't have, he hasn't had one yet, so you've got to be looking at him in one of these sort of races. I thought his Irish Tony would come and beat mine yesterday, but it, it didn't. So you have to be looking at and see if he, he got anything in this that, that might do it. And just Rosie could be getting just enough weight off the top two and be classy enough to give a bit of weight to the other two. So one of the two of the rest of them. So I'm going to go for just Rosie to win. Penelope Pitstop to come second. And I'll glass Judith to come third. But, uh, I'm, I'm going to do Lady Ravina to win. I think he's got a plan. Um, broken glass to grab a place. And Stu's child seems to be... No, they're about for place. It's consistent, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's not finished out of the top seven, and it's how many pound wrong is it? It's only it's only one pound wrong, isn't it? So you wouldn't rule it yeah. out, and it might make up for make up for yesterday for him as well. So that would be that would be good. So the Triumph Verdelman is the last on day two after the Hunters with Leon. So it's a bit of a funny place for it to be. It should be the first race tomorrow, really. Um, we're gonna fix that next season. Yeah, I'll fix it next season. Sort them out. That's good. So it's um always used to be sort of like twenty odd runners. This didn't it? It was the, it was the a lot of people don't realise it was the only non handicap where the book is paid out on fourth in the whole yeah. season. Um, and now since they brought the um, novice handicaps in, this has gone down to a smaller field. But it looks like a good race to me. There's a lot of lot of good ones in this. Uh, what do you reckon? Well, I ain't got any in this because I chucked both mine in um, in the Fred Winter. Didn't pay off. Thanks to you. <laughs> um, I think it's a two or three race myself. And maybe, I don't know what, oh, Midgers Fast is for David Lad, out uh, for David Robinson. I, um, I don't think Uli's, I think he's had, he's been beaten by this couple of these a couple of times. It's got to be between St. Nicholas, Hart, Wade, oh, and Beyond the Rocks. And that's where he won 80 Beyond the Rocks. He's only a juvenile. I mean, that's not, that's not, not right, is it, that? I'm not taking any notice of the ratings in this, simply because... No, These horses, a lot of them, they've been racing against each other every other week of the season. Now, my horse Gurr, that finished sixth yesterday in the Fred Winter, yeah. has beaten Beyond the Rocks. It's beaten St. Nicholas at Wade. It's it's oh. beaten... And I'm now thinking maybe I should have put Gurr in this rather than in in the in the other one. There's, there's, there's every possibility that any any of those horses can win. I mean, I don't think you could necessarily rule anything out. I certainly don't think that Beyond the Rocks is worth a rating of 180. I don't think St. Nicholas Wade is worth a rating of 171. I think that last season and the season before, the four-year-old division was stronger than it is now. I'm basing that on the horses that, that I have um, because I mean, it was really competitive, the four-year-old division, last season and the season before. This season, it's, it's been a bit hit and miss. And St. Nicholas at Wade does look the best one to me. I think he's better than Beyond the Rocks. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see either of them get beat, to be honest. Oh. Well, um, yeah, but you know, you, you look at that. I look at that before. I, obviously, I'm not checking through the form of what, what they've been running in. But I just can't see past those two. And you think you get beat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad they didn't go in the. Fred Winter yesterday, and they're going to ruin that race, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, I don't know what that Fred Winter was capped at. What was that capped at? I can't remember now. No, but I, it, 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 they probably couldn't get in that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's capped, I'm not sure. I think it's 140, I'm not sure. I think in Monaco, I'm pretty sure my cool Highlander, the reason I didn't put it in was that it would have been top weight, so that's 121. So it's got to be at least 130, hasn't it? So maybe that's why yeah. Centre Park's is in this because centre parks couldn't get in couldn't get in the handicap yeah piece. yeah i'm gonna stick with beyond the rocks okay no i'm gonna go with centre parks for david hooley because right. i think all these horses have been beating each other inside out sometimes and i don't necessarily yeah. think that uh, a small seven runner field will be that good for either of them um it could get messy this this race um, yeah. I might even fancy myself doing it because that cool Hollander is the best of my three hurdlers, uh, four year old hurdlers, and Love's No Friend won yesterday and Gur came sixth. So, yeah. Put a bit of chance, but centre parks. 
Well, you kept the best one for this race, did you? Well, the, 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 the reason why I put Cole Hyder in this one is because he would have had to carry top weight in the in the, in the, in the, in the handicap yesterday. So I thought, well, I'm going to put one in the triumph and two in the... Two in the if it had been yeah. that I'd have had two of them that would have been top weight in there, I would have put two in the triumph and one in the handicap. But I was quite happy with the fact that Gurr got some weight from the horses that I thought would be able to beat her. It was it was a no-brainer putting there was no friend in there because he was only off 10 stone or something. So that was a bit of a handicap blip, really. Um, mm-hmm. So I like to moan about handicaps and stuff, but he sort of did me a favour there. Uh, but that's another example of how if you have a couple of bad runs, you can do all right. In his first race, he came second. Uh, yeah. I got a quite stiff handicap, but then ran two absolute rubbish races, so he got dropped pretty quickly. If he'd have been second and third again, he would probably have been waiting out of that race yesterday. You take your, you pay your money and take your choice, don't you? So, um, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think mine is totally out of it, and I'm going to go for centre parking, but I am going to say, <laughs> I'm tipping all of them one by one, that if Darren Thompson has a, hasn't had a win, by this point then St Nicholas at Wade will absolutely definitely win uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's always got to ball <laughs> yeah so that's day two then so yep. um, I don't know about you but I don't think I'm going to quite manage two winners again no I, I, I might sneak one in <laughs> but uh, I'm not I, I, I don't think I will not <laughs> No, I mean, you, 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 don't want, you don't want to be greedy, do you? I mean, I had a really good Royal Ascot this year. I think I'll probably have the best Royal Ascot I've ever had. And I like to think I'm always going to get one winner at Chelsea. Well, I didn't have any last year, so I have two already. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, mm. an improvement. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I had a couple last year. The year before that, I didn't have a... a, a Cheltenham winner until the very last race the grand annual the last but one race because we have that Leon Van Rensburg race as the last race don't we um, so I went right away through the last race two seasons okay. again it's not a lot of fun is it so it's good to know you had your winner out the way and anything like you say anything's a bonus now well I hand a horse at the grand annual I hope he's winning that <laughs> Well, we'll talk okay. about the uh, we'll talk about the Grand Annual tomorrow because I'm really really miffed about the Grand Annual because my horse Mandrake Root won the Grand Annual two seasons ago, came second yeah. in the Grand Annual last year, didn't get put in the team this year, has got brought yeah. back in in the window. Just I thought well, it'd be nice to run her in the Grand Annual three years running and see what happens. And of course she's still on the rating she's got last year, and she's on 141, so she's one pound out of getting in it. <laughs> So I had to, I had to run her in the champion chase yesterday, and I think she's still going. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't very happy about that because I thought, how on earth can she be a pound higher after coming second than she was when she won it? But anyway, that's a different thing, isn't it? So we'll worry about, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, cheers, great. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Right. Have a good day, and if we can get a few more winners, we'll be all right to see what Leon thinks of our chances in the races today. Right, day two, uh, Cheltenham kicks off with the champion bumper. And in this, uh, Kwasak won well for Paul Rose last time. It was helped by my horse e-commerce, who's not in this race, setting a really fast pace. There hasn't really been much pace in these bumper races, and it's really a suited first dance, who's been allowed to dictate on occasions. And I'm going to go with Dave Hooley's horse, first dance to win this. From Kwasak, has been ultra sort of consistent. And um, I'll go with Loxwood to finish third for Darren Thompson, although Peregrine reluctance must have sort of some sort of chance for Davey Robertson as well. The Golden Miller is race 15, race 2 on day 2, and this is all about Cabo Zarad, who basically would have won if the race was over 2 miles 4 last week. It t- tied really late and allowed Howerman, who's ultra game, to get up on the line. It's probably going to be a touch short for um, Howerman. Um, and, and Cabazarad must have a, a big chance to win this. I'll go with Cabazarad to win. I think Keen Part is probably the best of my two in the race. I'll go with that to be second. And I think Signpost has a better chance than expected for Craig Beckwith. And I'll, I'll go with that to be third. Race 16 is the Per Temps. Um, it's been the target for October Sunset the whole season, according to Greg Clutterback. The horse is lightly weighted. I think the horse has a huge chance in this race. Uh, Dance of the Demon is top weight, and it's pretty hard to carry top weight um, at Cheltenham. I, I, I think October Sunset is well weighted. I think Expressway must have a chance for Patrick Hogan as well. Um, Cruz on Bar has no form, but can't discount Craig Beckford's horses. So... Uh, in this race, I'll go with October Sunset to win. I think Expressway will be a second. And then I'm going to go with I Love My Brick to finish third. I think the, the lightweight and Kevin Meenigan has good record at Cheltenham as well. So I'll go with that to be in the picture third. Race 17, the Ryanair. Well, the long pause has been amazing this season. And so is the Overlord, actually, who came into form last time. But the long pause... 
is always up at the pace, runs 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 races handy, and is really hard to get by. Is uh, really strong in the finish. Sven Forkbeard likes to be up at the pace and and should give a good account of himself. But you know, I, I, th I think this is all about the long pause. Uh, it's going to be very hard for anything to beat that. Uh, I would go with the long pause to win. I think. I'm going to go with Cape Solitude to be second and then uh, Swen Forkbeard to be third. Those are my one, two, three for the Ryanair. The World Hurdle. Michigan comes into this race rated 180. And on the occasions Michigan's been beaten, he's been unlucky or he's carried a huge penalty. And we'd have fine. That's my best chance at the festival this, se this, this, this year, this season. I'm going to go with Michigan to win. I think it's going to be a, it'll be a good horse who beats Michigan. Um, I think that Stolen Princess will hopefully set the pace. I think the biggest danger will probably come from Long Stay for Dave Hoody and, and maybe Man of Manners for Josh Sutherland. But um, I'll go with um, Michigan to win for Man of Manners and a Long Stay. Race 19, the Brian Advisory uh, Stable Plate Hannigan Chase. Um, it's quite an open event. Uh, Duff Kate Collada is the top weight. I think it's probably too much weight to carry our child number. I don't think the form is such a standout for me either. A loyal ally of mine. Uh, he is a bit in and out and uh, has a tendency to not jump that well, so I'm not, not too enamored about that one's chances either. I think Gator Complex must have a chance for Darren Thompson. He's been very consistent. Um, in his last four starts, always been there about. But I'm going to go with Davy Robertson's Satic and Chips to win this. I think the horse is feasibly weighted. Uh, a good run last time. It's been sort of, you know, in running in better better college class field than this. I, I would go with uh, Satic and Chips to win this. Um, I'll go with uh, Martin Needham's Circular Bridge to finish second. And maybe another Davy Robertson horse back in third, the ringer. Race 20, the Troll House Stud Mare's Novice Hurdle. E-commerce will set the pace. I uh, don't think she will hold on. I think it's all about first act here. I think first act will probably appreciate the fast pass. I think first act uh, to win for me, from, from, uh, for Dave Uli, from Jumbo, for Josh Sutherland. And maybe e-commerce will hold on for third. Race 21 is the Kim Muir challenge handicap chase it's rare that a front uh, a top weight wins one of these races so that probably puts a, a line through manic monday for me and probably last class judith as well um, i like leo's holiday in this i think it was too far for leo's holiday last start i think alex cherry normally gets one or two cheltenham winners and i think this is a possibility a, a good a possible a win for him so i'll go with leo's holiday to win this for alex cherry um i will go with broken glass to finish second and uh, Patrick Hogan likes the look of Lady Ravana, although it's unseated both races. Um, I'm more reluctant to go for horses unseated twice, but I'll go for Lady Ravana to finish third. The last race of day two is the Triumph Hurdle. It's a two horse race for me between Beyond the Rocks and St. Nicholas at Wade. I think it's between the two of them. They've dominated the group ones the whole season. Beyond the Rocks can lead or come from the back, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, he dominated last week. Uh, St. Nicholas and Wade was probably too far back. I think the smaller field will probably suit St. Nicholas and Wade better than it did last week. Pretty close to call for me, but I'll go with Beyond the Rocks to beat St. Nicholas and Wade, and I'll go with Midrius Fast to be third for Davy Robertson. Well, there you go. And that's the day two preview then. Thanks again to Leon for sending his tips in over the weekend. You'll probably gather that Leon did those audios before yesterday's racing. Graham, myself, and I chatted about one o'clock in the morning after we'd finished all yesterday's stuff. So we'll get on to today's racing now then and wish everybody good luck for day two.